what's popping people oh and nick so you know these are the indian papusa but they actually weren't built by indian they're actually british and uh built by corgi they made them in the 50s a lot of uh people said they were uh military stuff and they the military did use these but they weren't built for the military originally i, I don't believe they the military did use them and parachute them out of planes but i think there's a military version i don't think this is a military version i think this was the general public version but yeah they're british british indian so kind of cool though Let's see what else we got around here a little triumph tiger cub they're cool but they're kind of slow pokers 70 mile an hour is top speed on these good looking though they're a nice norton Nineteen sixty Norton Dominator. Six hundred CC, which is unusual size displacement for British. They're usually six fifty or five hundred. This was a six hundred, actually five ninety six. Hundred five miles an hour. Good looking bike, though. Let me zoom out. There we go. Good looking bike. I like it fully restored of course not much here at, at barber we're at barber motorcycle museum in alabama not much here that's not fully restored another really cool bike but just slow as can be top speed was a 70 and take you three miles to get to 70. this one's unrestored this is original paint bike never been painted Maybe some spots touched up here and there, but I don't see any signs of it ever being repainted. It's dulled out and crusty. But yeah, these are cool looking bikes, but just too slow to ride on modern day roads, man. Someone will run you over. Moto B. I don't know if you, have you guys seen my Moto Bs and collection at the Benelli Motor Club in Pedro not mine but theirs I just showed it to you um, Moto B was actually one of the Benelli brothers who started their own brand Giuseppe I believe it was he broke out and started his own brand it's the only one of the names involved with Benelli that the Chinese have not bought they have bought Benelli they have bought more Bedelli, but I don't believe they have bought Moto B yet. Yet, there's a really pretty set. 1950, 1940, 1954. They made these, but once again, slow poker, man. I think top speed on these bikes is like 80, and it takes you a mile to get there. But good looking bike. All right, guys, I'll keep shooting you, keep watching. Hit that share button for me, I appreciate it. It makes the world a difference of who sees my videos if you hit that share button. Thanks, guys. The massive Suzuki RE5 Rotary. <laughs> it's a crazy bike. It's actually the instrument cluster. This actually flips open, and they all checked like that and went bad. Someone, I'm surprised no one's repopping them, but I haven't seen any. The problem with this bike is it is a nightmare to work on. It really is, man. You got to take literally the whole motor part to get to anything. Other than that, it wasn't a bad bike. It wasn't a very fast bike, and it was a heavy bike, 660 pounds, 670 pounds. Only did 104 miles an hour, which is pretty slow. You got that massive radiator trying to air water cool that bike. Front end's the same as a uh, as a water buffalo GT750, but the RE5 just didn't work. 
they're around. You can pick them up pretty reasonable because people are afraid of them because they're so hard to work on. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Probably one of the most durable motorcycles ever made. There is, this particular one's a 31. I think they made it for a few years. This is a 500cc. Well, they actually are 498, but they call it a 500. And you've seen a video of this bike running from my friend Bob Dole revving it to like 12,000 or the highest RPMs you could rev it. Um, don't believe any of them came with any gauges. This one has no tack, no speedometer. Um, I guess in 1931 you didn't need it. But very durable motor, just indestructible. External valve springs, which was common in this, this era. People were like, how can that work? The rockers, how do they get lubed? Uh, they grease them. You know, you, you grease them. Some early big motors had onboard greasing systems that, that shot grease to them. This, these don't, but. See how they curly cued the fuel line? That's for vibration so it didn't crack. And it helps cooling too. And of course, no early bikes had air cleaners. They were just sucking the dirt right in there. <laughs> I don't know what the first bike was an air cleaner. That's a good question. What was the first bike with an air cleaner? They call this the lunch meat slicer, this bike. And all this era of, of Motor Guzzi because they had this big external counterweight on the flywheel. So, the lunch meat slicer bikes are very high demand and people like them a lot. So, and you can see why, it's beautiful. So, all right, thanks for watching, guys. If you ever get a chance, come here. This is the Barber Motorsports Motorcycle Museum in Leeds, Alabama. It is the biggest in the world and it, they do a phenomenal job. All right, guys, hit that, hit that share button. What motor would you say that is? Looks like a BSA, right? But it's not. It's a Kawasaki. 1967. The British Kawasaki. I mean, it's so BSA. It looks just like it. I mean, identical. But it's not. It's Japanese. But yeah, that's. I mean, I don't see a BSA close by to compare it to, but they're the same. Very unusual bikes. Here's another one that you don't see very often. 1982 Heskeith V1000. Big heavy bike that only did 120 miles an hour. 86 horsepower. Made in Great Britain. It looks heavy. It is heavy. Almost 600 pounds heavy. <laughs> Not terrible looking, but yeah. Bit kind of a big heavy turd. It's got a cool chrome molly frame. I've never heard of it. First time I've ever seen one. So it's gotta be pretty rare. Got a nice dashboard. Right in your face stages, which I like. Norton 850 Commando Electric Start. What do we got here? I know that's an Eva Harley motor. 94 Goodman 1200. Great Britain. With Harley Davidson Sportster Power Plant. Not bad looking. I like it better than anything Harley made in the Sportster version like much better I guess someone tried to take off a brand and it never popped so they gave up happens a lot more than people know they make a couple hundred bikes and that's it the guy who tried to bring Norton back not that long ago that's what he did spent millions made a, made a couple dozen bikes and went bankrupt alright guys thanks for watching hit that share button for me I appreciate it Rolls-Royce powered, jet-powered motorcycle. And it's size that exhaust, it's massive. 
It only does 227 miles an hour, though. I figure it would be faster than that. I mean, I wouldn't do 227 miles an hour, right? But I'm surprised it's not faster than that. I thought it would be over 300 with a jet engine. I wouldn't ride it. It's cool though for a display piece. And this guy has a big display. You go on forever. The 76 Honda Goldwing. 130 miles an hour, and you can put a million miles on them. And you really can, too. <laughs> I've seen it. 75 was the first year. This is started the touring motorcycle. They're not bad looking naked. They're getting harder to find naked because now they got a big fairing and all the bags and all the crap on them. But yeah, that's a million mile motorcycle. Well, here's a here's an unusual bike. They call it the British Kawasaki because it looks just like a BSA motor. It might even be a BSA motor for all I know. I mean, it looks exactly the same. There's Norton, that more BSA. Uh, it's all made in Japan, though. Oh no, wait. Yeah, very similar to the BSA. A7 and A10s. I mean, it looks like they copied it to a T. I mean, pretty cool builds right here. A little Honda motor. There's a Hercules Wankel. Pretty crazy builds, man. I don't know. You could ride them very far. It's the same as this one, but different bodywork. I like the Wankel. I like how the body, the air flows right through it. It's like a hollow tube. Pretty crazy. This is actually the design center. Barber Advanced Design Center. And they design, they're designing bikes here. I don't, teaching people how to design bikes. And they have built some. They built this, probably built in Birmingham, Alabama, man. didn't know it existed but there it is 2014 that was 190 miles an hour man that's pretty fast trying to read some information to v4 for an American production vehicle first metric metric motorcycle huh the first d domestic metric motorcycle. Huh. It's saying something. I've never heard of them before. 190 miles an hour. It's fast. It looks really comfortable. It looks like it's a pretty quality build. With the cluster and all. I mean, it's got the best of everything, Olean's, Brembo, which I don't think every bike now does, but yeah, I don't know anything about him. He, he told me about the, this whole design center, what they're doing here, and they're teaching kids how to do the process of designing and actually making a bike into a bike using clay and molding the bodies, which is pretty cool. Because someone's got to learn the trade because we'll all be gone. So, if you look over there, see those engines right on that wall right there? They were in the Morbidelli Museum when you walked in. So, it kind of gave me a little tear jerk when I saw those. All right, guys. Appreciate you watching. Hit that like button. Hit, I mean, hit that share button for me, man. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think about everything in the comments. And if you ever get to Alabama, make sure you come to this Barber collection. It's fantastic. See you guys. One of my favorite Harleys. 
XR750. This bike did 160 miles an hour in 1972. It's pretty fast for 1972 for Harley, man. It's fast. This is factory race bike. Real deal. Look at the size of that gas tank fill. <laughs> so you can just dump it in. It's big. It's a big, big cap. Let's see if got any, any uh... Mm. Renzo rode it. Apache rider, Italian, of course. But yeah, it didn't say, it doesn't say it won anything. Look at the size of that front hub. Massive. 12 inch hub. Maybe bigger than that. The rim's 18. Yeah, 12 inch. Rear disc, which, I've seen that before. And I questioned it at the Harley Museum that it had a rear disc, but I guess they all did. Dave from Bullpen bought one of these at the National Motorcycle Museum at the auction, and I think he got a great deal. I wish I would have bought it. I always wanted an XR750. Alright guys, see ya. Keep watching it. Keep shooting. Up guys, our 1929 Excelsior Super X Hill Climber. Look at the size of that sprocket. That thing's, that thing's cool. I like that it's grungy and used. And Imagine hill climbing this thing back in the day. Hardly any, no, no rear suspension at all. Hardly any front. Be pretty cool. Rating standard. Fantastic bike. 1922 Reading Standard V Twin. 1,100 1, cc's. Don't look that big. That's what it says. Don't give it top speed or nothing. Pretty bike though. You don't see them up, come up for sale too often. Pretty rare. Henderson. 1921 Henderson Deluxe with sidecar. Talking mucho dinero. Big money right there. Sell this and buy a house. Literally. Another Excelsior 4. Let's see what year this one is. These were, this is the kickstand. All the old pre-war bikes had a kickstand like that. It's pretty crazy. Old back tire goes up in the air. 1925 Henderson Deluxe. It's only 400 bucks brand new. Now it's hundreds of thousands. So, good investment on your money if you bought one new. And you stashed it away. I don't think there's anything today that you could buy new that stashed away that would go up in value. Very little. Very little. 1915 Sears Dreadnought Twin. Cost $235 brand new. Today, I, I would think over 100 k If you could find one. Like I said, I don't think you could buy anything today and stash away that would be worth to go up in value. Everything's junk. Once again, look at that nickel plating. Not chrome, nickel. Way better looking than chrome. See it in the handlebars. It makes it look like jewelry. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. What's up kids, Zoe and Nick? 18, 1894. Hiddle Brand and Wolfmore. Heidel brand. H I L D E brand. This thing is crazy. And I'll show you why it why it's so unique. It's not like a traditional drive on a motorcycle. This is actually that right there is actually the connecting rod to the piston. No, I'm serious, it really is. It's a connecting rod. Here, 
I'm going to show you a cutaway because you won't believe it. There's the piston. There's the piston. There's the connecting rod going right to the rear. And that's the crankshaft at the wheel. And that's the cam. So this is the cam. That's the cam. That's the crankshaft. This is a push rod, and this is the connecting rod, and there's the piston. Talk about crazy, man. And it worked. It actually worked. It has no suspension. It didn't have suspension. But yeah, pretty crazy, man. Don't see the braking. Where's the braking? It's got to have brakes. Hmm. I guess it maybe it doesn't. Because <laughs> I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing a brake. It's got to have a brake. But I don't see a brake. There's no brake on the front, I can tell you that. Let me go look down here at this one. Uh, twin zone and four stroke. Oh, okay. Wood brakes, wood block, wood brake blocks acting on front tire. Oh, right here. Oh my God, that's the brake right there. That's it. Wow. I love, I love nickel plating. See how it looks like jewelry? It's not like chrome. Nickel plating is so much better looking than chrome. Every bike should be nickel plated, not chrome. It literally looks like jewelry. Nickel is much prettier than chrome. But yeah, that's the brake. That couldn't work very good. Guess that's a little cooler down there. This thing's pretty high tech for 1894, man. Wonder how much it cost back then. Doesn't have any information on what it cost. Probably not much. Probably less than you think. But isn't that crazy that that's the push rod? And that's the crank? It's pretty crazy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate you all watching. And I really appreciate you hit that share button for me, man. It helps me a lot with Facebook. Thanks. What's going on, kids? Oh, Nick, at Barber Heritage Days. Two Vincent Black Shadows. A 49 and a 52. Man, are they beautiful. Yeah, they're super sharp, man. I really like this one a lot. I don't know why I don't usually like powdered blue bikes, but this one pops. Very, very nice. Beautiful. I don't know if you guys watched last week in Italy. I had that Vincent that was really nice, too. That thing was grand like a champ, man. The guy was keeping up with us at 120. This is pretty nice. Pretty nice. I like to hear one run. It's crazy how they did the suspension. Pretty sweet.